What is your favorite part of February? I hope you said Valentine's Day. This paper mache heart is perfect for Valentine's Day or any time of year, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make. Who can resist red hearts? I know I can't, but you can paint yours any color you like. I'll show you how I paint mine in a folk art style, but there are no limitations and the possibilities are endless. February in Pennsylvania can be bitter cold, but we'll stay warm inside and get creative with this fun project. I'm Laura Beth Love, an artist and Penguin Random House author, and I love to create unique, creative crafts and share them with you. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our heart base. And to do that, we're going to make a pattern. And you're going to take a regular piece of paper, fold it over, and we're going to sketch half of a heart onto the paper. And we're going to cut that out. And that is going to serve as our pattern to trace onto a piece of cardboard. I cut a piece of cardboard right off of a box, and that's going to be the very innermost center of our paper mache heart. So grab a pencil, piece of paper, fold it in half, sketch half of a heart. It doesn't have to be perfect. Do it however you like. I like mine elongated. And once you cut it out, you can adjust it a little bit if you need to make it, you know, a little bit thinner or you know a little bit shorter and open it up take a look at it as long as you're happy with it it's time to go to the next step so grab your piece of cardboard and your pencil and we will trace the heart once again I found that I had two different types of cardboard in my basement I had a thinner firmer piece and then I had like a regular corrugated like a kind of a thicker, more spongier piece. And I chose to go with the thinner piece of cardboard. It is not a flexible piece like a cereal box or anything like that. It is a, a very stiff piece of cardboard. And I thought that would be a nice firm base. So positioning my heart onto the cardboard, you're just gonna take your pencil and trace all around it. And you can adjust it as well. If you decide, you know, you want your heart to be kind of more short and squat or, you know, just, you know, a little bit different shaped, you can do that. So once you're finished tracing, grab your craft scissors and carefully cut along your pencil line to cut out your heart. And you can create a base like this for all different kinds of shapes to make for paper mache. Stars. What else? How about a moon? I'd like to make a paper mache crescent moon. I think that would be cool. Maybe I'll do that in another future project. So I'm just carefully cutting around the edges. Make sure you cut the curved parts nice and smooth. Try not to leave any little points of cardboard on there. And this is really quick to do. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time. As I say, with most of my projects, you can find most of the materials in your own home. And if you're a kind of person who likes to do arts and crafts on a regular basis, you most likely have all of the materials for this craft and for many of the other ones in my other videos. So inspect your heart, see if you like it. And if you are, it's time to move on to the next step. So we're gonna get some masking tape. Now I have two different widths. I have a standard, um, I think it's about a one inch width, and then I have a heavier, wider width, and a piece of bubble wrap. Now this is the small bubbles. And what we're gonna do is we are going to wrap our heart in one layer of bubble wrap. And you can see I have it doubled over, and I have the heart laying on top of the bubble wrap. And I'm just gonna take my craft scissors and I'm gonna cut out a piece of bubble wrap just as if I were going to measure and cut out a piece of gift wrap to wrap a present. Now the reason that we're using bubble wrap is to give our heart a little bit of a puffy dimension. Usually when you make paper mache, you will use something underneath the masking tape such as crumbled up newspaper, some people use aluminum foil. I think the bubble wrap works great. It lends just the right amount of thickness. Unless you want to make your heart like really, really, really puffy, um, then you can ball up newspaper and you can tape that down to the cardboard. But I find that is not a good way to work because you can't get like a real even, smooth kind of texture. So the bubble wrap on the front and on the back 
is just right. So you're going to cut around all the edges. And like I said, I had my piece folded in half, but I am going to cut the two halves apart. You'll see in a moment. And it just, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Try to make it about the size of your cardboard heart. And then we're going to get the masking tape and we're going to start taping it together. The first piece or two of tape are the hardest because it kind of wiggles around a little bit. So you're going to have to adjust and readjust while you're holding it. And once you get the first piece or two down, um, it, it holds it together pretty well. So as you can see, I'm doing the first piece and I'm just wrapping it right around onto the back. Next, I'll take a second long piece of tape, and as I did at the top of the heart, I'm going to do a, a secure wrap around the bottom. And now the bubble wrap is pretty much on there, and we can get down to business with just wrapping the whole thing up with masking tape. And to get started, I'll use my thinner tape, and I'll just start at like the top, and I'll pull the tape out, like just like a long piece. You don't want to do too long because you don't want it to get twisted and tangled up. Um, if it does, you can just tear it off and start again. So I'm going to wrap it around and around. And this is a good way to kind of cover a lot of ground quickly. And, you know, once we have this done, we're going to take our wider tape and we'll put some big pieces on there. Now to go into the top V shape on the top of the heart, you're going to need smaller pieces of tape. So you can just take us like one of the big pieces and just tear it into little strips. You'll see me do that in just a little bit when we get to that section. But we're going to take some of the big pieces of tape and just cover up, you know, all of the bubble wrap because when we use the paper mache, which is a mixture that has water in it, we don't want it to seep into the base of the heart. So every spot of cardboard and the bubble wrap all needs to be covered with masking tape. You want to go over all the edges of the tape overlapping with another piece so that you don't have like any little slivers that moisture could seep in. So keep covering it. The big pieces of tape work great and keep working around all of the edges until the heart is completely covered. And now you can see how I do the top of the heart and I use little strips and just go over it until it's all covered. And that's our heart and we're ready to move on to the next step which is making the paper mache. You're going to need a medium sized bowl with a whisk or a fork, some salt, some regular flour and some warm water. I'm using one half cup of flour and I have about three quarters of a cup of warm water and I'm not going to pour it all in right away. I'll put all the flour in there. I'll measure about a tablespoon of salt. I measure it right into my hand and I'm using kosher salt because that's what I use at home for cooking and that is going to help serve as a preservative for our paper mache and when I put the water in I'm going to put about one half cup of warm water in and I'm going to mix it up a little bit because what we want to do is we want to get a consistency kind of like pancake batter uh, maybe just a tiny bit thicker than pancake batter you don't want it to be too thick and you don't want it to be too thin so as you can see I'm just going to mix it up and get all the lumps out and until it's really nice and smooth. And once you have the lumps out, you'll be able to determine whether you need to add a little bit more water um, as I'm gonna do, maybe about a tablespoon or so at a time, and mix that in until you have the right consistency. Now, if you accidentally put too much water in, you can put a little bit more flour in, but like I always say, then you have that never-ending cycle of you know too much water, add flour, too much flour, add water. So just get to that nice pancake batter consistency, and then once you have it all mixed up and ready to go, just set it to the side, and we're going to tear our paper strips and while we do that, our paper mache is actually going to thicken a little bit due to the flour. So I'm going to be using regular newspaper or circulars, whatever, um, and it needs to be the non-shiny, porous type of newspaper, like your standard newspaper print. You don't want to use anything that's glossy that is not going to absorb the paper mache. And I'm going to tear them, not cut them, because they will fit together more you know, nicely and smoothly when you have torn edges as opposed to ones cut with a scissor. So I'm gonna tear all different sizes, some larger, some smaller, 
you'll need some smaller ones to go around like the point of the heart and up at the V at the top. And you can use some larger pieces to go right across the center. And I'm going to make myself a big pile because the last thing you want to do is have your hands in sticky paper mache and then realize you don't have enough paper strips torn and you're tearing strips while you're working and it just kind of can be a mess. So yeah, get that paper torn first and once you have a nice little pile of it, then we're ready to move on to the next step and start applying our paper mache to our heart. Now once I start working, I really don't like to stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up with a whole bunch of pieces that are ready to put on the heart. So I'm going to take about six or seven pieces, put them in the paper mache, and then using my fingers, after I dip the paper into the mache, I'm going to use my fingers to wipe off the excess, and then I'm going to line the pieces up around the rim of the bowl. And what that does is it gives me a an en never ending supply. I can just reach over when I'm done applying one piece, I can reach over and grab the next one. And that's so much better than, you know, dipping a piece, wiping it off, putting it on the heart, and then having to set the heart down on the table to dip the next piece and so on and so forth. So this way you have a whole bunch of pieces ready to go. Now, don't let your paper sit in that paper mache for too long or it will start to really, you know, disintegrate and fall apart. So just dip it in for a few seconds, wipe off the excess. I know some people like to use a sponge. I just use my fingers, quick and easy. And then as you see, I can just start applying them one after the next. And again, using your fingers, just wipe off any excess. You don't want it dripping. Okay, so you want the paper to be wet, but you don't want you know it dripping all over the place. So once you apply a piece of newspaper to your heart, pick up the next piece and then overlap it. And that's how you're gonna get a nice smooth texture. So you wanna try to use your fingers to press down any little uh, wrinkles that happen or any little points or corners around the edges of the heart. You will have a little bit because we are using uh, strips of newspaper. There's a kind of paper mache you can make that um, you mix up and it's like a clay kind of and that is more for like making moldable things that you would like sculpt. But with this type of paper mache, you know, you are using newspaper strips so you might have some, you know, texture here and there and you know that lends to that really nice handcrafted look and like I say you know that it was made by a person and you know not a machine in a factory so yeah, keep overlapping those strips, keep dipping some more, and then like I will set my heart down, and then I'll do another batch of these, you know, that I have on the side of the bowl, and that just enables you to keep working, and it's just a smart thing to do. So once I've gone around all the edges of the heart, I'll flip it over, and I will make sure that I have the center of the reverse side covered, and then I'll take those small pieces, and I'll do those little detailed areas, like the point, and the, you know, the V at the top of the heart. Keep putting pieces of newspaper on until you have a nice thickness. So, you know, not just one thin coat of newspaper, but you want to have a nice hefty coating. So then I'm going to set it on a piece of aluminum foil on a cookie sheet, and I'm going to let it dry overnight. Now, I would not put this in the oven with the oven on because you have bubble wrap and tape in there and you don't want to heat that up. You don't know, you know, you don't want it to be melting plastic and making fumes or anything dangerous. So what I will do is I will put my oven on 200 degrees, let it warm up, I'll turn the oven off and then I'll put it in and just let it sit there for a while or even overnight with the oven turned off just to get, you know, some of the dampness out of it. And here it is the next day and it's nice and hard and it's ready to paint. Even though I'll be painting my heart red, I'm going to first give it a base coat of white paint. And that is going to let our red be so much more vibrant. You won't see any of the newsprint showing through if we give it a coat of white paint. So just a standard white craft paint with a craft paintbrush and just paint it all around front, back, all the sides. And when you're finished, just set it aside to dry and it should be dry within 20, 30 minutes. And you know, halfway through you might wanna flip it so the other side can dry as well. And once it is completely dry, now we can apply our red paint. And I will list below in the description all the materials that I used and also the recipe for the paper mache. And again, craft paintbrush, you wanna wash it between using the white and the red paint or you'll end up with pink. 
And if you want to paint it pink or whatever color you like, that's fine. Like I said it in the beginning of the video, use your imagination, use your creativity and individualize it, make it personalized, make it whatever color you like. I'm making mine nice bright red and I'm going to paint in all different directions because it is a textured heart. So you want to be sure that you get into all the little crevices. And once you do one side, flip it over to the other side uh, at one point, my fingers are going to start to turn red and you know I'll just set it down and then touch it up and once again we're going to let this dry and I'll let it sit for maybe 15 minutes and then I'll flip it over and I'll touch it and see if it's tacky and, and if it is still tacky I won't flip it and once one side's dry I'll flip it over let it dry on the other side and while it's sitting there I'll use my paintbrush to touch up the parts where my fingers were holding it because you know that's going to pull the paint off. I find that using this flat brush it's about three quarters of an inch or one inch wide flat brush and you know if you hold it perpendicular and you go in like a circular motion you get really nice coverage into all those little you know textured spots and once it's dry you also want to make sure that you have a nice even coat so if it looks like a little thin here and there you might want to put on a second coat depending on your paint uh, some they're not all you know the same some acrylic paints are a little heavier bodied, some are thinner, um, you know, more opaque, more transparent, translucent. So what you want to do is just make sure you have a nice even coat of paint and that you can't see any of the newsprint underneath and set it aside until it's completely dry. And then we'll move on to our next step. Now here it is nice and dry and I'm going to add the hook now before I do any further painting on it. Um, I just like to have it on there. It's just the way I do it. You can wait until the very end if you like and put a hook in. I kind of like to have it in ahead of time before I do my decorative painting. So I'm using these little eye screws and you can get them at hardware stores. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pin or a needle and I'm gonna mark, you know, the, find the center and you're going to put the pin in and you're going to make a small starter hole because you're going to be pressing through the masking tape and maybe some bubble wrap and cardboard. So you don't want to take the eye screw and screw that directly into the heart. You need to have a tiny little hole there to start for the tip of the screw and that's a good way to do it. And once you have your hole, you can just take this, the screw and screw it right in. And like I said, you can get these at hardware stores or, you know, uh, I bought mine online and they come in different sizes. Now, these are like the really tiny ones and I think they're just right because I don't like too much of a visual of, of seeing a big hook and you know we will thread a ribbon through it at the end but now that the hook's on we can do our decorative painting and I'm going to take a look at my paintbrushes and I'm going to look for something small and I'll choose two or three brushes along with a script writer which is the brush that has uh, really long bristles and I'm going to set those aside and while I'm working I'll, I'll figure out which one I want to use. You can always take a piece of paper first and you know test your brush out. I'm going to use again that same white paint. It's white acrylic paint. It's nice and heavy. It is you know it's very opaque and I love it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on my paper plate palette and I'm going to start with my script writer because I like to hold my brush close to the bristles and you know that's usually the brush that you'll use for doing you know decorative um, like vines long flowy things but for me it just worked well for this and I'm just starting with like an S design and you'll see as I do this I kind of have them all going in the same direction and then I change my mind and I'm like well maybe I want to put one you know facing it and then one facing away and not all the same direction and you know if you don't like the way you do something, you can take some red paint and you can paint over it, let it dry and start again. And I was just kind of experimenting while I did this design and here's a time lapse. And in the end, I think it got really pretty. So I did that same pattern, very simple S shape, like a worm all around the edges. And when you're coming close to where you started, you want to take your time and make sure that you have the right spacing so that you don't have like a big gap. So just be mindful of that. And for the center design, I just did some really basic kind of folk art 
marks. So I did some dots and I did some like strokes and I just did it symmetrically. It's like one at the top, one at the bottom, one on the left, one on the right. And then when I decided to add another one, I just did the same thing as a pattern going around. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just, you know, figured it out while I was doing it. And sometimes you can use these really basic designs like dots and lines. And, you know, it's so pretty. And it definitely is a real folk art style. And here you'll see I'm just finishing it up with a few more strokes and a few more dots and adding on to it, taking a look at it, making sure it's balanced, seeing where it needs maybe something, you know, a little bit more like these little last dots. I'm going to put, you know, just a couple last finishing touches on it until I think it's finished. And there you have it. You can paint your heart however you like. And then once it's completely dry, all you have to do is thread a piece of ribbon or a string or a piece of fishing line through the top, tie a knot, and there's your finished heart. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope you get to try it out at home. If you do, make sure you leave us a comment below and let us know how it went. Again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe check back soon. I'm working on a really cool project and I think you're going to love it.